Hello everyone, the summer movie season is just around the corner, but there's still films opening this weekend, including one I want to get out of the way as soon as possible. Here is the latest ensemble romantic comedy from Gary Marshall, Mother's Day. Got it? Oh, uh, yeah. Two, actually, but only one is currently, you know, becoming a woman. Gotcha. Same boat, two sons. How is that the same boat? Uh, I, uh, I guess just the, the number. Yeah, nice meeting you. Huh? Sandy with two sons. This film is two hours. Two hours, but no story. It's just a bunch of rich people doing things of minor consequence. This film doesn't exist in any realm of reality. None of these characters are in any way fleshed out or made interesting. Why should I care about their lives? The truth is, I didn't. We have jokes that aren't funny, and it's beyond schmaltzy. This thing squeezes as much syrup as it can, as it desperately tries to get all of these stories to connect. We have the bigoted parents who find out one daughter is a lesbian and the other is in an interracial marriage. And it resolves in a way that would never happen in a million years. There's Jennifer Aniston dealing with her ex-husband getting a new wife. And her response is to obnoxiously overact. Jason Sudeikis is fine, but... The film really wants us to cry at his predicament, but it never feels earned. Not to mention a complete waste of Jennifer Garner. Julia Roberts is given a bad wig and is just, well, Julia Roberts. The one bright spot? Britt Robinson does light up the screen. I smiled whenever she showed up, but uh, maybe it's because she was the lead in Tomorrowland, and every time I think of that movie, I get happy thoughts. Otherwise, this was a two-hour Hallmark card that was more sugary than eating an entire container of Skittles. Mothers deserve much better than this. I need a really violent and gruesomely dark film to just even things out. You know what? Green Room will do. Here we go. Green Room is a very claustrophobic movie, as we're basically stuck inside this small building surrounded by a hate group. And it's really scary. The film's director, Jeremy Saunier, captures the fright one might feel in this situation. What's especially fantastic is seeing how the protagonists band together to stop these neo-Nazis from killing them. It's all really tense, and Saunier also doesn't shy away from the potential violence of the situation. At this point, I've seen enough gory films that blood and guts don't faze me anymore. Except for this movie. The wounds and cuts and gunshots are unflinching, and I definitely found myself squirming at times, so this is probably not for the faint of heart. All of the actors work really well, including Patrick Stewart playing against type as the leader of the group trying to harm these young musicians. This is gritty and engaging, and I think it will definitely be considered among the best horror films of the year, even though there's not a monster in sight, and thankfully, no jump scares. Thanks for watching this week's reviews, and I'll see you next time.